Guam, an island paradise in the Western Pacific where America's day begins. It is the largest and southernmost island in the Mariana Archipelago. Every year, thousands of people visit Guam to enjoy its natural beauty and uniqueness from other places around the world. However, one visitor takes another form. It is known as the coconut rhinoceros beetle. Unlike other visitors, this invasive species is planning to stay and with bad intentions. As a matter of fact, they have already destroyed a huge population of one of the island's most iconic trees, the palm tree. In September 2007, a rhino beetle was found swimming in a pool of one of the um, wedding chapels in the middle of Tumon. It was then uh, turned into the Department of Agriculture and uh, subsequently turned up to the University of Guam where we identified it as the coconut rhinoceros beetle. The CRB has been in the Pacific for a long time. Its native hose range is in Asia and it's been in the um, Palawan Islands for um, you know, since the 1940s, uh, just after the war. It is also found in American Samoa. It is found in um, uh, Fiji, uh, as well as in Indonesia and the Philippines. Despite the diverse array of rhino beetle species found around the world, they all share similar life cycles. The coconut rhinoceros beetle has four different distinctive life stages. The first being the egg, which lasts for about 12 days. Um, the adults lay the eggs that are about this, um, it's about less than a uh, peppercorn size. A single female rhino beetle can lay up to 50 eggs in decomposing vegetation matter. In two weeks time, eggs hatch and emerge as larvae. And then after they hatch, um, they go into the uh, first instar stage. That first instar lasts close to 20 days, where it then turns into a second instar, which lasts for another 21 days before turning into a third instar. Um, what makes them different is actually their head capsule. Their body size isn't really um, corresponding to their stages in life. It just, it's the head, head capsule size. So this, this guy can range between 2.5 and 3 milli millimeters. The second instar is about five to six millimeters. So what you're looking at is not necessarily the body, but the head capsule. The last stage of the instars is the third instar. This is the biggest uh, grub we'll ever have, we have on Guam. If just looking at the, inst uh, the, the head capsule, it's about 9.5 to 12 millimeters, the biggest. After the third instar, the rhinoceros beetle then turns into a pupa, which is very similar to the cocoon stage of a butterfly. The pupa breathes, but it does not eat at all. Yet, it is going through another transformation. The shape of the adult insect is molded within the pupa skin. When it becomes fully developed, an adult beetle will emerge, leaving behind the empty pupa skin. The adult beetle take the, the complete life cycle takes anywhere from 95 to 105 days depending on uh, weather conditions. Once the adult coconut rhinoceros beetle emerges, it then waits until it loses a percentage of its body weight before it flies up and uh, feeds on a coconut tree. It feeds in a coconut tree right at the crown and that will be the area where the coconut leaves or fronds attach to the um, coconut tree. The rhino beetle will burrow in using its um, legs as well as its horn and feed on the coconut sap for approximately two to three days. In the process of making its way through the heart of the palm tree in search of sap to feed on, these beetles cut through developing leaves. The damage they cause can be seen throughout the island in the form of V-shaped leaves. If not treated or managed properly, these trees will eventually die. Experts believe that the damages caused by the rhino beetle stems mainly from the adult stages of its life cycle. 
especially when feeding and reproduction takes place. It will then, after that, emerge and find a breeding site where it will go and mate with another beetle and produce eggs and start a colony. Its favorite breeding site is standing dead coconut trees or other palms, but it also breeds in organic matter or piles of uh, discarded uh, vegetation, tree branches, and, and long cuttings. The abundance of food and the lack of biological control evident on island are two of the main factors that this invasive species is able to flourish on Guam and cause such unforeseen devastation to the palm trees. If a person were to look around Guam and see areas which are showing uh, signs of heavy uh, rhino beetle feeding, they will see that our coconut trees are in very bad shape compared to other places. We have noticed this and we attribute this um, uh, heavy damage uh, due to the fact that on Guam, unlike other islands, there is very little biocontrol occurring at the tops of the trees. And we think that this is a function of the fact that other islands have a lot of birds and have a lot of uh, rats and therefore there's biocontrol and, and uh, predation happening at the tops of coconut trees. Because Guam's ecosystem is, um, uh, has been impacted uh, with uh, the presence of the brown tree snake, we have very few birds and we have uh, very low numbers of rodents. So we don't have that feeding or biocontrol happening at the tops of the trees. For that reason, we find breeding and uh, the rhino beetles completing their entire life cycles in the tops of the trees very common, unlike other places. Knowing and understanding the coconut rhinoceros beetle is just half the battle. Due to Guam's unique ecosystem, the island cannot naturally defend against this invasive species. However, with the help and involvement of the community, the island of Guam may have a fighting chance against this relentless pest. <laughs>